Welcome to Christ United Methodist Church. This is a special Ash Wednesday service. In the tempests of life on its way message today, I would invite you to make sure that you have the elements ready for both communion and the blessing of our crosses. In our packets today, you should have seen a communion element that contains both the juice as well as a communion wafer. Also in your packet, you would also find a string, a burlap string, and also a cross. We are inviting you to be creative and however you put together uh, your cross and your string, uh, whether it be a key fob or a necklace or a bracelet or however it is that will help you throughout Lent, uh, I have put mine together into a simple prayer chain and I will be carrying this with me throughout the season. I now invite you to go with me into the Word. Our scripture today comes from Psalm 103 verses 1 through 18. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns
surrounds you with his steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good things as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. <clears throat> for, as, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion, for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. For as mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower in the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. And his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. Have you ever had one of those days that has caused you to ask, what have I done wrong? To be human is to have one of those days. When Charlie was three years old, Charlie is my youngest child, we lived in New Salem, Georgia. This is a little bit of a mountainous region on top of Lookout Mountain. Uh, where we lived, we, the parsonage as well as the church was right in the middle of the woods as well as uh, like most of the homes in that area. We also had a road that went right in front of the parsonage that was the main thoroughfare connecting that part of Georgia with the rest of Georgia. Most people tended to travel rather quickly on that road. Early in my ministry there, my father-in-law came for a visit. And during that visit, we had an eventful day. On that day, a door broke. I got stung by a hornet. My dog got stung by a hornet. And somehow, we lost Charlie and the dog all together. It was one of those days. Now, describing the door breaking as well as uh, me getting stung by a hornet and the dog getting stung by a hornet is easy. However, describing Charlie getting lost is a little bit more complicated. My father-in-law had gone to the backyard to have a conversation just to sit and enjoy nature. And we were supposed to be watching Charlie, but we were more concerned about our conversation. We didn't realize anything was wrong until I looked up and I saw a lady and two children and a dog walking out of the woods. Now, I didn't really think that much about it because I thought they were probably walking to the uh, walking track that was across the street. But as they got closer, I realized that's my dog. And as they got even closer, I realized that's my child. And I could see Charlie was just bawling his eyes out. As they got close enough where they could talk, the lady introduced herself, told me that she was uh, our neighbor as well as a local teacher, and she asked, is this child yours? Now at that moment, it was impossible to hide the fact that that was my child and I had somehow let my child wander off. I was having one of those days. The best that I could figure out, the best that Ann and I could figure out, was that Charlie had seen our dog wander out of the fenced-in backyard, and Charlie had simply followed, trying to get the dog to come back. No matter what, my wife and I felt shame and guilt for letting a three-year-old wander off, and we wondered what kind of parents we really were. Of course, to be a parent means that you ask that particular question. But in that particular scenario, we felt a lot of guilt and shame. And we asked, what did we do wrong? Now, it's easy to ask that question. A lot of times it really is easy to answer that question. In that particular scenario, I could tell you what 
I did wrong. But there are a lot of times that answering that question, what we did wrong or why is this happening to us, is a lot harder. Our lives are filled with systems. And because of those systems, a lot of times laying blame on what is going wrong is a lot harder than what we would like it to do. A lot of times many factors come together to trigger chaos in our lives. 2020 has been one of those years. We are very quick to lay blame on 2020 with COVID and say that because of COVID, this is the reason that it is the way it is. But yet there is a lot of systems that have been in play within 2020 as well as COVID itself. We could talk about individual attitudes, economic decisions, political systems. We could talk about cultural mores. We could even talk about religious ideology, not necessarily theology, but our ideology. All of these systems came together in 2020 to create a hurricane. We were left scratching our heads, wondering why. What did we do to deserve this? What has someone else done that has caused all of this suffering? Now the reality is whenever we ask this, the easy answer really is nothing and everything. We have done nothing that caused this, but yet we have also done everything that caused this. And it's also fairly correct in saying that. The problem is, is it's rather vague and it doesn't really help us to answer the problem. So we turn back and we try to provide an answer. So we start pointing fingers. We try to say, have we offended God? Is this because we have allowed immorality into our world? Is it because people just won't wear a mask and they don't care? Is it because people won't stop being so discriminatory? Is it inevitable because of decisions that we made in the past? Blame questions go on and on and on. And the probably it, probably the reality is we can blame everyone and we can blame no one. That last statement allows us to deal with the real question, the real issue, because it's not really laying blame as much as it is pointing to our hearts. You see, none of us can get the vaccines to arrive any quicker. None of us can force the economy to recover any quicker. None of us can force our neighbors to do what they don't want to do. None of us can change someone else's mind, much less their political or religious ideology. All that we can ever do is work on our own hearts. And brothers and sisters, this is what Lent is about. Lent is about working on our heart. So often whenever we think about Lent, we think about giving up chocolate and TV or a myriad of other factors for 40 days. But hear this, we give up chocolate and TV and everything else so that we can work on our hearts. So that we can grow closer to God and have God work upon our lives. Few Lenten seasons reveal our need for heart work than this season right now. We are discouraged, bitter, angry, anxious, overwhelmed, lonely, frustrated, depressed. All of these emotions are just desperately crying out for us to work on our hearts. It's wonderful then that whenever we turn to Scripture, in the Scripture we read today, one verse stands out, verse 13. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. Brothers and sisters, I want you to hear this. God is not apathetic to our current situation. His heart goes out to us, and He has compassion upon us. He's not waving His finger at us and saying, See, I told you. Nor is He raining misery upon our misdeeds, saying, If you would only turn. I thoroughly believe God's heart is hurting for our anger and our anxiety and our fear and our loneliness and our frustration. God hurts with us. 
The psalmist's words are thoughts we need to dwell upon during this time. Here is a God who heals all of our, de- our diseases, who redeems our life from the pit, who crowns us with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies us with good as long as we live so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. And His steadfast love is from everlasting to everlasting. This is our good God. A God who is seeking our best, a God who loves us, and a God who is working in a where in a place that we have no control. He is seeking to redeem 2020. At the same time, God is calling us to the hard work of our hearts. He is calling us to look at ourselves. You see, God is not just a good God. God is a God of justice and of righteousness. God is not blind. He knows that some of our actions and some of our thoughts and some of our attitudes are at the center of our troubles today. He knows that a number of the things that we have done during 2020 weren't really started in 2020. They have been going on for a long while. Many are rooted in the depths of our core. Those things that we want to blame upon other people, upon everything else, they have been there for a while. There are parts of our souls that need transformation. The problem for most of us is is we don't really realize how much transformation we really need. I love the story that is told of a radio station out in Los Angeles that experienced a major earthquake. And they made a broadcast over the radio station in which they were urging people not to use the telephone so that the emergency systems would be able to use the telephone and just as they finished giving this emergency announcement they said and we'll be right back after we take this break to give away a pair of tickets to Phil Collins concert to caller number 95 how quick we fail to see our need our need of heart transformation According to the psalmist, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. This is not a God who is out to punish us. This is a God who wants to transform our lives. Who wants our hearts to know joy and peace and hope and life and love. This is God's work in our lives. During this year's Lenten season, we are asking you to take a different approach. We're not asking you to give up chocolate or TV or some other object that you normally would. If you want to do that, we invite you to. Those are good and well during a normal year. Brothers and sisters, this year has been nothing but normal. Instead, we're asking you to do some serious heart work. We're asking you and inviting you to give up bitterness anger, discouragement, and anxiety, fear, frustration, depression, loneliness. We're inviting you to a season of heart work. And believe me when I say this, this is not easy work. You know what your heart needs more than anyone else. So we invite you to work with God to determine what is best to give up during this Lenten season. Our invitation, though, is not just about laying down things. It's also picking up. Picking up joy and hope and love and grace and mercy and forgiveness, even power. To help us during this process, we are offering more than ashes. Because of COVID restrictions, we are unable to do the normal imposition of ashes. Instead, we are offering our wooden crosses. And you will find these wooden crosses as a part of your package. What we're inviting you to do is to carry the wooden cross as well as the burlap string with you throughout this season so that you can have it with you and can feel that need, that need to give up what has been weighing you down, to do that heart work and know that God is working with you. I invite you at this time to prepare your heart as we bless these crosses and these burlap strings. If you will, please take out the cross and the burlap string as you have them 
And please join me by laying your hands upon that string and upon that burlap. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, we come to you humbly today asking you to bless these crosses. Remind them of our need for you, of our need for heart work. Remind them, allow them to remind us of our own mortality and our need to change so that we may remember your gracious gift of everlasting life that is given to us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I now invite you to take the communion cup that is also in your packet and join me as we prepare our hearts for communion. Let us go to the Lord with our confession and our pardon. May the almighty and merciful God who desires not the death of the sinner but that we may turn from wickedness and live accept our repentance and forgive our sins and restore us to the Holy Spirit, to the newness of life. Amen. It is right to give our thanks and praise always and everywhere to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and your love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for forty days and forty nights, you bore up the ark on the waters. Save Noah and his family and make covenant with every creature on the earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandment and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And on your holy mountain, he heard your still small voice. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from sin, your Spirit led us into the wilderness, where he fasted forty days and forty nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for your sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during forty days, and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of your suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, now let us lead us into repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts, that during these forty days of Lent we may be gifted in grace to affirm the covenant you made with us through Jesus Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, 
one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We now invite you to partake of Holy Communion with your brothers and sisters throughout this service. My soul in sad exile was out on life's sea, so burdened with sin and distress, till I heard. As you begin this Lenten season, I invite you to begin it with God, with His love and with His grace. Go forward now in the hands of God as we begin this season. Amen. Amen. 